Well, ladies and gentlemen, tighten up those bootstraps and put that hard hat on because we have got one big bear to tackle tonight. And our title tonight is the Lagrange Airbound. And I think a lot of students would vote that this is the single most challenging topic in all of Calc BC. And at, point, at some point tonight, maybe you're going to feel like this little rascal here, but hopefully we'll take our time, we'll get enough examples that by the end of the class tomorrow, hopefully you won't feel like this rascal anymore. So to set the stage, we're attempting to answer the following question. If we were to use a ninth, or an nth degree Taylor polynomial to approximate some function called f of x at a point c that's relatively close to the center, how accurate is our approximation? And so that's really what we're going to talk about tonight. And of course, error, I think, implies that is how accurate is our approximation? So as an example here, let's say we had some function named f of x, and it was just e to the x. And we know as a power series starting at n equals 0, that would be x to the nth power divided by n factorial to infinity. And maybe we created a third degree polynomial that we wanted to use to, in an effort to approximate e to the x. And so the third degree polynomial would be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial um, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, okay? And then that would be the end of it. We wouldn't worry about any of the other terms because we were just limiting ourselves to a finite number of terms. And so let's say we wanted to evaluate f of point 2. And what we did is we plugged the point 2 into our third degree Taylor polynomial. And basically these two answers wouldn't be quite the same they'd be very, very, very close, but not exactly the same. And so our question is, how close are they? How close are these two answers? And what we're saying is basically, this guy right here represents the exact value of f of x at point 2, and this guy right here represents our approximation, our approximated value using a Taylor polynomial. So here's, we'll get the formal definition out of the way, and then we'll start applying it to some examples and seeing how it's going to show up on the AP exam. But basically, the Lagrange error bound says if you use a Taylor polynomial, and that's what we'll be using, of degree n centered at or about x equals c, okay, to approximate the value of x equals a. So a is going to probably be really close to c, in the last example, the polynomial was centered at 0 because it was a Maclaurin, and we used it to approximate f of point 2. So in that case, a would have been the point 2. Then the exact function value falls within the following error bound. And this, this is going to look really, really silly, uh, but trust me, it's not as intimidating as it first looks. Okay. And basically, we're saying the maximum error, and so I use a capital E with a subscript MAX, is going to be less than or equal to, okay, the n plus first derivative evaluated at z multiplied by x minus c raised to the n plus 1 power, all divided by n plus 1 factorial. All right. So basically, we're actually, and this is interesting, we're not going to probably, probably not going to pinpoint the exact error, but what we're going to do is we're going to tell you what the worst possible error could be. In other words, what we're creating is worst case scenario, okay, which is basically a, just a safe bet. Worst case scenario, we're saying, you know what, you're probably not off by this much, but worst case scenario, you're off by, you know, 0.4 or something like that. Now let's try to dissect what some of these letters are on the next slide. First things first, hopefully you kind of see a pattern within this expression um, that and it didn't just randomly fall out of the sky. If we were creating a Taylor polynomial, we would say that the general term of a, just a general Taylor polynomial would be the nth derivative evaluated at c over n factorial multiplied by x minus c to the nth power, right? 
Well, basically, that's the same thing that I've got here. It would just be the next term, okay? This is the nth term. This is the n plus first term. The only drastic difference is I'm using a c here, but I'm using a z here, and I'm going to try to clarify that in a few minutes. But we, I always say this. If you just understand that this represents the first omitted term, the first term that was not used within the nth degree polynomial, then that's 90% of the battle right there. Because then you remember, this has got to be n plus 1, that's got to be n plus 1, and this has got to be n plus 1, and that's by and large a big chunk of it. So just keep thinking to yourself, similar, similar, not exactly the same, but similar to our alternating series, just keep thinking first omitted term. In other words, the first term that was not included, or the first term that got left out of the general nth degree polynomial. All right, now what are some of these letters? I'll slide down here a little bit. Okay, first of all, the letter n is the degree of the Taylor polynomial that was being used. All right, the letter c is, of course, where that polynomial centered at. A lot of times it's centered at zero, but not always. Next is the, the variable x, and that just represents the value that we are attempting to approximate. In our first example there, when we used e to the x and we were attempting to approximate f of 0.2, um, that 0.2 would have been our x in this case. And now for the real tricky rascal, the letter z. All right. Z can be any number that falls between X and C, okay? So basically we'd write it like this. C is less than or equal to Z, which is less than or equal to X. So Z is often a mysterious number. Mysterious number. There are cases where we won't even know who Z is, and I'll explain why in a few moments. And that's okay, We're still, we still have the capability of solving the problem. Now, z is a mysterious number, and what we want it to do is we are trying to maximize the value of the n plus first derivative at some number z. So we're going to let z be whatever number falls within that interval that causes this value to be as big as possible. Now, a couple of guidelines here. Let's say that the n plus first derivative was a strictly increasing function. So from left to right, it might look something like this. If that was the case, then we would let z equal the right endpoint x, because we know at the right endpoint, it's going to be the, you know, bigger than anything to its left. Or just the opposite. If we knew that the n plus first derivative was a decreasing function, you know, maybe it looked like this, maybe then we would let z equal the left endpoint because we know that the left endpoint of a finite interval would be the tallest, greatest value within that interval. So those are just some rough guidelines. The key is this. We are trying to maximize the value of the n plus first derivative, and we're going to do whatever it takes to make that number as big as possible because we're trying to represent the worst case scenario. What's the maximum error that could be involved with this approximation? So here's our first live example, and uh, we're going to do quite a bit of work on this problem before we get a chance to play with and apply Lagrange's error bound. So, but it's great review in the meantime. So they said, consider this function f of x, sine of the quantity 3x plus pi over 4, and let p of x be the third degree polynomial for f about x equals 0. And so what I've got to do is I've got to create this, I've got to build this polynomial from scratch pretty much. So what you're going to see me do, and I'm going to do it relatively fast here, um, you may have to hit the pause button, is I'm going to create, or, I'm going to, or first of all, I'm going to calculate f prime of x, I'm going to calculate f double prime of x, and I'm going to evaluate, calculate f triple prime of x. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate all of them at zero, and then I'm going to plug those values into the Taylor polynomial to create the third degree polynomial. Um, so let's see what it looks like. So here I ran through my three derivatives real quick with some chain rule. And then if I plug a zero into the first derivative, let's see, what would I get? The cosine of pi over four is radical two over two. So I've got three radical two over two. 
And then if I plug the 0 into the second derivative, I'd get negative 9 times radical 2 over 2. And then if I plug the 0 into the third derivative, uh, let's see, negative 27 times radical 2 over 2. Okay, so now I'm need I'm trying to picture the Taylor theorem, and we're going to try to plug everything in. And we'll say p sub 3 of x is, let's see, the first term, which would be f of 0, which is just radical 2 over 2. And then, let's see, 3 radical 2 over 2 times x. And then we got negative 9 radical 2 over 2 divided by 2 factorial times x to the second. And then negative 27 radical 2 over 2 divided by 3 factorial. So I think this would now be a 12. And I'll cube it. Okay. And then what they wanted me to use this polynomial to approximate f of 0.3. So I could say f of 0.3 is approximately, and all I'm doing here is I'm just going to substitute a 0.3 in for x, and then we'll grab our calculators and plug them in and see if we get the same crazy decimal. I'm certainly not expecting anything pretty or nice out of this answer. Oh goodness, and hopefully I typed this correctly into my calculator and, and I'll let you guys yell at me tomorrow if I didn't. I got, if I go three decimals, I got 0.971. Now we're going to see some real crazy... Oops, sorry about that. Uh, we'll see some crazy decimals tonight where we'll have to, you know, the, like maybe the first six decimal values are zeros and so we'll probably use some scientific notation uh, before the night is over. All right, now we're, I think we're ready to have a discussion about Lagrange, and the question is, how close is this approximation to the real true f of 0.3? Okay, so building off the last question, here's where we really want to get dialed in. It says, let's use the Lagrange air brown to show that the difference between the exact value and our approximated value is less than 1 1,000th. Okay, now that is supposed to be a subscript right there. It should say p sub 3 of 0.3. And uh, first couple things, there are absolute values around it indicating that we just want to know the magnitude of the difference. We don't care whether the difference is a slightly positive number or a slightly negative number. That's irrelevant. We just want to know, you know, what is the magnitude of the difference. And basically, subtracting these two values, you've got your exact value and you've got your approximated value. And when we subtract them, what we're creating is, or what we're finding is the error involved in our approximation. Now, and again, this is worth noting, Lagrange isn't going to give us the exact error. He's just going to prove or promise that the error is smaller than a certain number. Um, and so let's recall what the formula was earlier in our notebook. I'll just write down the generic version. And he says the error is going to be less than the n plus first derivative evaluated at z times the quantity x minus c raised to the n plus 1 power all over the quantity n plus 1 factorial. Okay, now in this particular case, we had just used a third degree polynomial, so I'm going to let n equal 3. It was centered at 0, and we use that polynomial to approximate x at 0.3. Okay, now what that means right here is that this mysterious value known as z falls between 0 and 0.3. And I made a comment earlier that there's a lot of times we're going to solve this problem without even knowing exactly who z is. And that's okay. That's something we're going to become comfortable with. We don't care if z is equal to 0.1 or 0.2. And the reason we don't really care is because when we look at the fourth derivative, and you can look back in your notes to see what the third derivative was, the fourth derivative of this particular function um, was going to be positive 81 sine of the quantity 3x plus pi over 4. Okay, you'll notice we do start to use kind of just a normal number up here. We don't, we don't keep doing more and more prime signs forever. So this, this is the notation for the fourth derivative. And here's what we're going to do. Whenever you see sine or cosine, what you can say to yourself is it doesn't even matter what's in here. This expression right here will never be bigger than 1, okay? And so we'll say that it's, it's, it's got a maximum value equal to 1. 
and of course, 1 times 81 is 81. So what I could say to myself is that the fourth derivative of this particular function is always less than or equal to 81. 81 is the biggest possible value that it could ever reach. So I'm going to use 81 in that case. So let's go back to Lagrange and see what this is looking like. We would say that the maximum error is less than or equal to, let's see, and I'm going to go over nice and slow. We're thinking, okay, I need the fourth derivative. I need, let's see, x was 0.3 minus 0 raised to the n plus 1 all over uh, 4 factorial. And we just explained or attempted to that the fourth derivative will never be bigger than 81. And then I'm going to multiply that by 0.3 to the fourth and divide by 4 factorial. And as I plug this into my calculator, that factorial sign is hidden within the math menu. You have to go over a little bit and find it, I think, under probability. But let's see what we get. I got about 0 0.027 on my calculator, so the maximum error is 0 0.027. That's not bad. We're saying probably realistically the, the real error is smaller than this number, but I guarantee it won't be bigger than that number. Okay, now one last comment to hopefully deepen our understanding here is, do you recall on the last slide we said, according to our third degree polynomial, we said f of 0.3 was approximately 0.971, okay? So we could create, we could write an interval that uh, basically sandwiches the real f of 0.3 within it. So for instance, we could say the real value of f of 0.3 is somewhere between Okay, because uh, basically we're saying we're off by 0 0.027 in one direction or the other. So it might be 0.971 plus the 0 0.027, or it might be 0 0.971 minus the 0 0.027. And again, plugging this into my calculator, that would give me 0 0.944. And let's see, plugging this into my calculator, I got 0 0.998. 998. And so we're just really confident, 100% confident, in fact, in saying that the real f of 0.3 falls within that interval. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going we're gonna to conclude tonight's video right there. We're going to see some slightly different twists and turns tomorrow. We're going to take a look at a couple different styles of questions as to how the AP presents this topic. Um, but I think we got a nice intro. We'll continue to build on it tomorrow and hopefully refine any, um, you know, uh, gaps that we might have in our understanding with Lagrange's, okay? Nice job hanging in there. We'll catch you tomorrow.